For the second set of notes on section 7.1, we are going to focus on more triangle application examples. Please keep in mind we learned about three different things today. We talked about the exterior angle theorem, we talked about the midline theorem, and also the fact that all three angles in any given triangle must add up to 180 degrees. While we're doing these problems, I want you to really think about those different theorems and think about how you can apply them in these problems, if anywhere. You will not be told when to use the specific theorems. You will have to look at the diagram and determine it on your own. For example one, we want to find x, y, and z, and we're given this diagram. So right away I'd be thinking about what do you see here? Well, we see a bunch of different triangles, and we have first this yellow triangle here. What do we know? Well, we know that two angles of this triangle are 80 and 75 degrees. And since we want to find x, y, and z, we could find y at this point because of the fact that all three angles in any triangle must add up to 180 degrees. So if we take 180 and subtract off 80 and 75 from that total, we end up getting that the measure of this angle is 25 degrees. So y is 25 degrees. Do you see any other triangles in the problem that we can use? What about this one right here? We have our larger blue triangle, and we know some of the angle measures in that triangle. That larger blue triangle, we can use the fact that all three angles of that triangle must add up to 180 degrees, giving us that the measure of angle X is 60 degrees. And finally, we have the smaller gray triangle here left over. And we now know that the measure of angle X is 60 degrees and the measure of angle Y is 25 degrees. And once again, all three angles of the small gray triangle must add up to 180 degrees, resulting in 95 degrees. So we found X, Y, and Z. In example 2, it reads that the measures of the three angles of a triangle are in a ratio of 3 to 4 to 5. Find the measure of each angle. This idea of ratio goes all the way back to chapter 1, and you should be thinking about putting x's on the ends of those numbers. And it reads here that there are three angles of a triangle. Well, once again, we know that all three angles in any triangle must add up to 180 degrees. So we can do a part plus part plus part equals whole here. We get that x is 15, but keep in mind we want to find the measure of each angle. So from there, we could find the measure of each angle, substituting 15 in for x. The angles are 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 75 degrees. Last but not least, in number 3, this problem is the most complicated problem on this page, in my opinion. And you'll see why in just a moment. So let's go ahead and label the diagram with tick marks based off of our given information. We know that we have two different angles that are bisected here. And we know that that top angle P has a measure of 72 degrees, and we want to find the measure of angle S. Now keep in mind, it would be that angle where I put the X in there, because we don't deal with angles that are greater than 180 degrees in this class. So right away, I'd be thinking about which theorem are we using. Do we see any exterior angles? Do we see any midlines? No. Once again, we're using the fact that three angles in any given triangle must add up to 180 degrees. Because that angle on the left, angle PRQ, is bisected, we know that those angles are congruent, but we have no idea what they measure. So let's call each of those green angles Y, because I've already used an X in the diagram. And then over to the right, let's call each of those blue angles Z, because we don't know the measures of those angles, but we do know they're congruent, so we can label them with the same variable. Now, let's come up with an equation that we know for a fact is true. In the larger yellow triangle, we're given that angle of 72 degrees at angle P. And we know that this larger green angle can be formed by combining those two Y angles to make that angle 2Y. And the larger blue angle on the right would be 2Z. And then that larger angle at the top, 72 degrees that we had talked about, those three angles, the 72 degree angle, the green angle, which is 2y, and the blue angle, 2z, must all add up to 180 degrees. 
Once we subtract 72 from both sides of the equation, we're left with the fact that 2y plus 2z equals 108. We can make that smaller by dividing the entire equation by 2, which leaves us with y plus z equals 54. Since we want to find that smaller angle s, we have to work with that smaller purple triangle that we just highlighted. We know that y plus z equals 54, so the sum of y and z equals 54. Well, we won't be able to find out what y is and what z is, but we don't care because we just care about x. So in that purple triangle, y and z together add up to 54 degrees. Well, all three angles in that purple triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. So if we subtract 54 from 180 degrees, we're left with 126 degrees for the measure of angle S. We saw a problem in which we were given the angle in the larger triangle. That's 72 degree angle at the top, the measure of angle P. And we were trying to find an angle in the smaller triangle. Please note, in the future, you may be given an angle in the smaller triangle and you may be asked to find the measure of an angle in the larger triangle. We'll focus more on problems like that in class. Also, one thing I want to make sure that we're clear on is in these three example problems, we simply use the fact that all three angles of a triangle must add up to 180 degrees. When you get into class, do some problems in class, and also do some problems in the book for homework, you will have to be actively thinking about the other two theorems which we talked about, which is the exterior angle theorem and the midline theorem, and apply those theorems to various problems as well. Please don't forget about those other two theorems in the near future.